Welcome to Friends and Neighbors. I'm Sherry Tatum, your co-host today. And you know, I always love to hear Sandra sing, but she's about to sing one of my most favorite songs, The Days of Elijah. I love it. You'll love the words to it. So turn your volume up real loud because you don't want to miss one word of Miss Sandra O'Neill singing beautifully The Days of Elijah. There's no God like Jehovah. That's one of my favorite parts. Oh, I love that song. I'm so glad you parts. sang it. And you Thank know, we you. got somebody here that's going to talk to us about Israel, and it's Robin Rowan, my friend, and she's with the Church for Israel, and it's going to talk about anti-Semitism yes. and what's going on over there in Israel. You know, I know Robin. She and I, well, she invited me to AirPack up in Washington, D.C., and I learned things, Robin, I never knew never I, about what's really going on. We don't know yeah. just but what I guess the news wants us to know. I don't know. But tell me a little bit about, you just got back from Israel. I just got back. Tell me what's going on. You and Greg, our producer. Went. Yeah. Yes, it was the Christian Media Summit. The Israeli government, government press office, GPO, hosts a hundred of the top journalists from around the world 
um, it's called the Christian Media Summit, and it's hosted by the GPO. Mm. I was very honored to be invited. Awesome. Because uh, I do all my writing and analysis on Israel, as you know. And, of course, Greg was there, you know, in honor because he represents Christian television here in the Atlanta area and throughout the southeast. Yes. Amen. And um, we had, you know, Eric Stackelback, Joel Rosenberg, mm. just really the, the top of Christian media. And, and is getting the truth out about Israel is difficult because yes. the media does not report it. I know. It really is up to Christian media to get the truth. Absolutely. And you have some of the truth. And I know you wanted to discuss a little bit about what's going on at the northern border of Israel. Yes, and it was amazing um, because we actually, the GPO had scheduled us to go to the northern border, to the Golan. And as you know, President Trump had recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. This yes. was a really big deal. Big deal, deal mm -hmm. absolutely. Big deal. The Golan Heights is an area, it's a very mountainous area, and it looks over the valleys and plateaus of northern Israel. Well, in the 67 war and at other times, Israel has been attacked from those mm, ridges and yes. from those mountainous areas. Mm -hmm. And it was so important that, that, I mean, that is ancient Israel land. It always it has, has been. been. God and gave them exactly, that land. Exactly. Amen. Exactly. And, you know, yeah. areas of that are all through the Bible. And, and we have, and the Jews have always lived there, and now we have the Druze community also lives there. They had come over from Syria, escaped from Syria, and they've settled. And now they say, we're part of Israel. Yeah. This is our home, and we're going to stand with Israel. All right. And we had an amazing ceremony that was historical. As we went up to the Golan, we visited Trump Heights. There's actually, and a lot of Christians don't know this, there's an area of the Golan in recognition of President Donald Trump. I did not know Giving that. sonority, they actually named this community Trump Heights. Praise God. <laughs> and we went to, there's this huge sign and it says Trump Heights. And we, it, they told me, the locals told me that this is, it was blowing their mind because all these tourists are now coming there that have never come to the Golan before. They're coming to get their picture taken with the sign. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> And Good. This is a huge tourist attraction. Now, we don't understand. I'm like, well, we understand. Well, we now, understand. is it the, the Golan Heights? Because when I went to Israel uh, with a Messianic Jewish uh, pastor, uh, we saw tanks up there. And we did, and we visited the tanks. Did and you I wish I should, I should have brought some more pictures. Yes. We visited the tanks, and we um, spent some time with the IDF soldiers up there on the border. And they actually were there with the tanks. And um, I've got a couple of articles on the on my Facebook page, the Church for Israel Facebook page, and on my website, churchforisrael.com, um, with, with photographs. And we had complete security clearance to be able to do the photographs. I mean, this was a media yeah, tour. Just, was it was ahead. media, so they took us, and we were able to do that. And we were briefed by an IDF um, commander. Explain IDF, though. The Israel Defense Forces. The Israel Defense Forces is Israel's army. Uh, they are volunteer army. Army, but they are actually, no, not really volunteer because every Israeli citizen, every Jewish young boy girls. and girl, I was when they graduate from high yes. school and turn 18, they do two years required service. I saw them, I saw these beautiful young ladies in camouflage with their, their big guns. Their M16s. Like yeah, walking around. <laughs> I thought, wait. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what yeah, is that? But they are trained. I mean, that's the service to their so country. Trained. Yes, they to keep are, it safe. They are so trained, and the best of the best stay in and become, you know, and make that their profession. Mm -hmm. But it's a required two years. And it's these young 18, 19, 20 year olds that are protecting the state of Israel Isn't from enemies, amazing? and they are constantly under attack. You know, Robin, why are there, why is there so much hatred towards Israel? Amen. It goes back centuries. Look at Haman in the mm. book of Esther. Yes. It goes back, you know, we, it's, we call it, I call it, spiritually call it the spirit of Haman yes. or Haman. Mm. And it is so widespread throughout the earth. And actually we're seeing a resurgence of it now because we're seeing these anti-Semitic attacks throughout Europe and even in the United States. Even in Los Angeles, there was a nine-year-old boy that had to leave the school 
because th there was so much hatred being propagated at him. He was so bullied, he said, I can't, I can't even stay in school. Our universities here in America. Um, you know, it, don't you think though that it goes, I think it's just the devil himself. It is. Against Israel. He hates Israel and what it stands for, our Savior and it's, was born that's there. That's right. It's the Jewish people, God's people, and the Jewish people were so favored before God and yes. still are. The Bible says the desert would bloom wherever the Jewish yes. people have put their hands on the land in Israel. They have taken barren desert yes. and, making, and made beautiful. thriving orchards and produce fruits out of this fruits just out of this world. when we were in the Golan we went to the apple manufacturer not manufacturing but the distribution where they test they test the firmness and the color and the ripeness the oh. quality control over the fruits and vegetables but most of the fruit throughout Israel comes out of the Golan yes. that's yeah. where all the orchards are yeah and it's such a beautiful area and I do I don't want to miss mentioning the historic celebration that we were part of as mm. part of that Christian Media Summit and Eric Stackelback, of course, he was the MC. They had the leader of the Druze, like the, the priest, the Druze priest, the Jewish rabbi, the mayor over the all, the, 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 the head councilman over that whole area came together in front of us and did a ceremony signing their unity, mm, living together in good. peace and unity mm. in the Golan. Wow. And oh. how they all, they were, they were thanking the President Trump for recognizing the Golan as sovereign Israeli territory. And they said, all of our people come together and we live together in peace and harmony right. with no conflict. Right. And it, different good. religions, completely different cultures, but they respect each other's culture and they live together in peace. Yeah. It was amazing. That's amazing yeah. because in yeah. the generation that we're in right now, there is a generation that has absolutely no idea as yeah. to the history of Israel. That's why I brought up that subject. Mm -hmm. Why is there so much hatred? Because in, in the generation that we are in right now, in the culture especially, yeah. they, we don't. It's not taught. It's skewed, mm -hmm. um, and it's skewed, definitely. extremely skewed. So, it's how can we as Christians skewed. be able to educate and love and encourage people to say, "Let's let's support Israel. It's a God calling." And I believe it right? is. I believe that it, it yes. really is. And the 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 most long term existential threat to Israel, besides Iran is the educational system in Absolutely, America. Absolutely, Robin. Because if it is, and we don't have time here, but the America support of Israel is so critical for Israel's survival on so many levels. Right now, since I left, 72 hours after I left, the bombs started being launched from Gaza. The hotel I stayed in, within that neighborhood, a rocket hit a house. Mm. I was barely on the plane. And I do want to share that with you because the Lord yes. told me that was coming. Yes. And I want to share that with yes. you as I was at the Western I, Wall. Is that when you said that the, oh, I, uh, the war is coming? I did. Besides this wonderful supernatural things that happened up in the Golan, um, the last day after the summit was over, I was going. I was invited to another side tour by some people throughout Judea and Samaria. Judea and Samaria again is ancient Israel land. It's ancient Jewish land. The Jews have always lived there, but that's what people call the West Bank now. Mm. Okay, but I was supposed to go there, and I love touring that area. I love going in and in, in seeing all the historical sites there. Um, but the Lord said, "The Lord stopped me." And he's only done this once before and it was significant, so it got my attention. Mm -hmm. Before I left and I was making plans for these other trips, he said, only go where I send you. Mm -hmm. And I've heard that before and it was significant. So I per my ears opened, I perked yeah. up. So the day after the summit was over, I sent, my friends went on, the, on that other tour and um, I did some quiet time with the Lord and I went down to the Western Wall and I spent over three hours just at the Western Wall. And 
Well, it you're is praying. Such, such a solemn Isn't place. Isn't it wonderful? I love and it. And they have all these chairs set out. And yeah. of course, the women are separate from the men, which yeah. is, I really do appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, so did I. Even, I mean, even yeah. though it's not our culture to be right. separate in mm -hmm. worship and prayer, it, it, it I really, wonderful. it's wonderful. Yes. Um, but anyway, I was sitting and praying, and then I would go up and put my hands on the wall, and I would just pray. And that wall has so much history. And the reason they call it the Wailing Wall is because so many people, and this has happened to me many times, when you put your hand on it, you feel the sorrows and the cries of God's people over the centuries coming out, mm. eking out of the wall. And you just don't expect it and don't feel, no, it's coming, but you lay your hand on that wall and you just start weeping. Yeah. Mm. And you just yeah. cry because you feel oh. the cries oh. of God's people. You yeah. feel it. It is a solemn place. It is, absolutely. But the third, I, I spent, as I said, several hours down there and I would have my hand on the wall and I would be in prayer and I would be in prayer the th and I would go and sit down and stay in prayer and then I would go back and you know, I wouldn't let other people go and have their hands on the wall. The third time I touched the wall, the cry came out from my heart, let not one more pebble, not one more pebble of this city be disturbed by God's enemies. Amen. Not one more pebble Amen. be disturbed from this wall. And that was the cry from my spirit mm. that came out. And as I was crying this out and praying this with against the wall, I actually laid my forehead against the wall and I was just intent. The Lord spoke to me and he said, the Holy Spirit said to me in that, in that inner voice that you get that's so yes. clear, as you know, he said, the war is coming. I was like, not one pebble, Father, not yeah. one pebble. He said, the war is coming. Even as you leave, my daughter, even as you leave, it will be right behind you. Mm. And I said, not one pebble, Lord. Yeah. Mm. And he said, it will come. He said, at first they will think it's a skirmish. Now, this was on November 7th. November 9th, November 9th at the wall. He said, even as you leave, they'll, they'll say it'll, it will come and they will think it's another skirmish because the rockets from Gaza, as you know, it, this has been going on for a long, long time. time. Yeah. But he said, it won't be another skirmish. This is the war and it's mm. coming. And I said, don't let, and I said, be your people, your people, we're praying for your people. And he said, but at this time, they will all know that it was me Hmm. Yeah. He is supernaturally going, to, he's going to make it, and it came, it was so strong. Mm -hmm. He said, they will know that it was mm -hmm. my hand that protected That's my God. people. And he said, God. just as in 67 in and in Lord. the other times mm -hmm. where it was my hand that saved Israel and my people, mm -hmm. so it will be this time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, because he has a covenant with Israel for eternity and God's going to watch over Israel. So imagine my, not, I obviously wasn't surprised, but imagine as I left Israel within 48 hours, the very hotel room I had stayed in before my flight left, that town was hit and the house was hit with the rockets from Gaza. And they've had over 500 rockets, I believe over now it's been going on since the 12th. I left on the 9th, it started on the 12th and the bombing and the bombing and the bombing and the IDF, well, the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces had assassinated the head Islamic Jihad terrorist. Mm. And that's what, that's what sure. started it. There's two terror groups in Gaza. This is Southern Israel, which is south of Tel Aviv. Yeah. Islamic Jihad, Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Hamas. Palestinian Islamic Jihad is the one who's been doing a lot of it. And the defense forces knew there was a big terror attack coming. So they took out the planner. They took out the head guy. Awesome. awesome. They took him out. They prevented a major terror attack from happening. So, but now the retaliation. Well, Hamas never got into it. And now Hamas is starting to get into it. Well, yesterday, I love this. Yesterday and the day before, the rockets from Syria started coming from Iran because Iran is completely funding Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Hamas. Mm. These are Iranian proxies. It's Iranian rockets. It's Iranian arms that's doing it. Also on the northern border, on the completely opposite side, on the northern east, eastern border, if Syria, Iran has built massive army battalions up. 
and in Lebanon to the north. When I'm standing at Trump Heights in the Golan, you can see the border with Lebanon and you can see the border with Syria. Wow. So rockets were fired from Syria into the Golan. Israel went and took out a major Iranian Quds Force, which is a military arm of Iran, bombed it. Mm. And there's a video that came out this morning, this very morning wow. that came out that shows the anti-aircraft missiles that they try or, tried to fire. Something freaky happened and the missiles went up and f exploded in the air and fell back down to the ground. They never even made it up in the air. Well, we know that's God. And we saw, and there's somebody got a the video of, of it. God. The yeah. hands of the God. The hands of God. And I'm like, okay, either Israel clandestine went in and put a virus into that anti-aircraft <laughs> battery system it. so that when they fired up, they just kind of fell to the ground and didn't go anywhere. Or it's the hand of God. I go with the hand of God. Yeah. <laughs> You know, the movement of God is present. It's not over. It's going to continue. It's going to get, I'm, a, I'm, yeah. I'm really afraid it's going to get worse before it gets better. But the hand of, yes, God, the hand of God will protect the Jewish people and will protect Israel. Yes, absolutely. Just as he always yes. has and has been. Well, we know like the six-day war, I mean, God showed up so much. I mean, they were surrounded by all the nations, other nations, this little tiny spot. And they defeat. They won. And they defeated them. Yes, it was supernatural. It was, it was supernatural. by the hand of God. And even in a Gaza conflict from years ago, if when the military actually had to go in the on the ground and go in to take out the rocket firing places, because they used the people as human shields. They actually put the rocket launchers in homes, in schools, and hospitals. Yeah. So if Israel tries to bomb the rocket launcher, they're going to kill babies. babies. Mm. Yeah. But that's what Gaza, that's what Hamas wants because mm, yes. they take that to the it's world bad stage press. and they, it's bad press. Yes. Because the UN, they're not going to look at what Hamas did. They're going to look, oh my gosh, Israel's what? committing war crimes. Mm. That's what it's completely slanted. It's completely mm. slanted. It's always Israel's fault. They're always just in the bombing. They're always and they're involved. And that's people. the, the, the lie of it. If I lived in Michigan and Canada started long, launching rockets over to Michigan, what do you think we're going to do? do? Yeah. You know, it's... You retaliate. It's, exactly. You're going to defend. Exactly. But even in one of those um, episodes in Gaza, talking about the supernatural hand of God, there was a group of um, Israelis group of Israeli soldiers about to go into a house to take out terrorists and grab the, the weapons. And a dove comes over and lands on a line and gets the soldier's attention. And when he gets the soldier's attention, he asks God, and he stopped him. The thing was booby-trapped. They would have all been killed. That's and they were stopped by the doves came in and warned them. Oh, mm. my word. God so and, and the awesome. captains of the captains of the Israeli defense fences report this stuff. Oh Lord, we're coming God's back. Big. I wish we had about 29 hours to discuss this <laughs> with Robin, but we don't. But stay here with us because we got about two and a half more minutes and I want to ask her about Hezbollah, so stay with us. Okay. Welcome back. We're here with Robin Rowan with Church for Israel, and she's been telling us about some of the things that we don't know mm. uh, that's going on in Israel. But now, Robin, you were going up to the border, I think, and you were being texted about a congressman. Is that right, about Hezbollah? I, this I, tell was me a little bit about absolutely that. incredible, and I'll try to make it really short, but it was absolutely incredible. I had gotten emails from APAC, the American Israel Public Affairs Committee. That's where is I the would. one. Yeah. You came with me to Washington, D.C., to policy conference, yeah. and please, pastors, come to policy conference. Contact me. I will get you big discounts. Christian leaders, pastors, you, to go. you've got to come to policy conference. If you want to know the behind the scenes of what's really happening, Amen, this agree. is where you get it. Yeah. Policy matters. Mm -hmm. In the U.S. support of Israel, we're the ones that are building the Iron Dome that are shooting those missiles out of the sky. Mm. Yes. They're built in Huntsville, Alabama. Oh. Really? Yes. The U.S. security assistance is so, so tight. We can talk about that later. But when I went up to the northern, we were going the next day to the northern border, I got an email from APAC said, we need the congressman in Alabama. I have a relationship with just about all the congressmen in Alabama. I spent many years there and the ones here in Georgia as well. Um, please get them to sign on to this letter to the, U the UN Secretary General, Congress, bipartisan, Democrat, Republican. We're sending a letter and it's about Hezbollah and about Lebanon. 
I'd gotten it the day before. I didn't pay any attention to it. I'm on the bus going up to the northern border. We had about a two-hour bus ride, and I felt something from the Lord on it. And I get a text saying, can you please get their signature? I open it up and read it, and this letter is so strong. It was critically important. So I sit there and I text. I get on my email on my phone, and I wrote like six different congressmen and linked them a copy of the letter. And it said there was a UN Security Council resolution from many, many years ago that said, Lebanon should have complete sovereignty over its nation and there should be no other arms, mm -hmm. no other armed bodies, no other... Th well, Iran has set up Hezbollah in Lebanon. Yeah. So it basically says you've got to do something about this. You've got to do something. So it's a strong letter from Congress to the UN about is, implementing it. Yeah. We get there and the, the head media guy for the Israeli Defense Forces gives us this huge briefing and that's all he's talking about is the UN Security Resolution 1701, he didn't even know our Congress at that very minute was going to do something about it. Wow. Oh, see, that's what I'm saying. Robin, At that you. very minute. Come back. Lord, thank you for being with us, friends and neighbors. Hope you enjoyed as much as I did. <laughs> Amen. See you next time. Oh, God.